Have you looked at Zach Hyman's numbers? No. Don't. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits! Let's Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How am I supposed to go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Over the San Jose Sharks is something I'm legitimately happy that I'm not saying. Yeah, yeah, that's where my head's at. You, you want to know where everyone else's head is at? Someone threw their jersey on the ice at the end of the game. To which a lot of people responded, geez, dude, it's game five. Yeah, but really it's year five, so let's talk about it. Leafs lose five to three to the San Jose Sharks, and this is why I'm actually kind of glad they didn't come back and win the thing. Stop getting rewarded for playing bad! Listen, I get that it's the regular season and not everything is a work of art and Tampa has struggled and Vasilevsky and Hellebuck has struggled except for last game. I'm paying really close attention to those two because I have them in fantasy. The Buffalo Sabres were undefeated heading into tonight and the team that made it all the way to the Stanley Cup final is magically the worst team in the league. It's the early part of the season, I get it. And we can sit here and yell and go, ah, oh, hutch, 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 and no, oh, don't worry, we're gonna do that. There is reason to do that, but they didn't play well in front of him either in the defensive end, in the offensive end, at all! At home, after several days rest, playing against a team that didn't make the playoffs last year and played last night! And they had the second period where they allowed three goals and they go into intermission and they're like, folks, we gotta get that under control, boys! All right, let's go! And then they allow one less than two minutes into the period. No, I didn't want to see them rewarded for that. No, they're gonna have this heroic comeback, hmm? This heroic comeback at home with rest against the traveling, tired San Jose Sharks. No, sit in it, lose, and be mad like everybody else. I'll go through the game and talk about the individual points, but there, there were some narratives coming out of this that I, I just have to address off the top. We'll get to Hutchinson. I think we can pick on people other than the third goalie. Sheldon Keefe on the Leafs' top power play unit. Not on the same page. Fighting it. Not executing it. A lot of the same stuff we saw last year, to be honest. Yeah, yeah, you know what? He's right. He was saying a lot of those things, and the Leafs were playing basically the same way on the power play. I can't imagine why they looked the same. I mean, they went out and got a different assistant coach who was manning the power play. Do you think it could have something to do with it? It's the same guys! Ooh, and this one too. Keefe says reporters should be asking as many questions about Matthews and Marner as they are about Richie tonight. Not happy with that top line in general instead of one player. Says it seems like media wants to pile on Richie, but let's narrow the focus. Tonight I learned the media put Nick Richie on the fourth line. Dude, Richie's been brutal, but he's also the new guy, and Matthews and Marner are very not- Okay, Matthews is just starting his season. He looks great. Wh which is it? Which is it? Did he look amazing against the Rangers and they got goalied? He had eight shots and 16 attempts? Or... Did he just get back? Here everybody, we're gonna play a game. We're gonna play a game. We're gonna play a game right now. I don't know who the leading scorer on the Leafs is. I don't. So we're gonna look it up. You guess who the leading scorer on the Leafs is, okay? I'm gonna give you five seconds before I go to the next jump cut. Five, I almost started at three, four, three, two, one. Gonna look at it just to show you my live reaction. Nylander! Hey! Hey! That's pretty cool. Anyone want to take a stab at tied for second? Spezza, Bunting, Tavares, and Riley. Nylander, by the way, has five points. Those dudes have three. What did I keep hooting and hollering about when the Leafs lost to the Montreal Canadiens? Oh yeah, William Nylander had five goals in seven games and Spezza had three. You get eight goals combined from those two and you cannot lose that series. The season begins and lo and behold, who are the Leafs two knights in shining armor? It's that guy that half the fan base tried to trade for three years and a dude on a league minimum contract who's older than the GM! Dude, at some point the stars have to decide if they want to be better at hockey or tricks on ice. Entertainment value, it's one Wonderful, but you watch it for long enough, which I think everyone watching this video has, you realize, oh, they're doing nothing! Pass into the slot, but no one's there or even prepared for it. Looks dangerous. You maybe go, oh, you are taking a little bit of breath, but it's not actually a scoring chance. You possess the puck, which is good. You skate with speed, which is good. And you fly around the net and do nothing. You fly at Mach 10 up to the point, And the other team is like, good, good. That is exactly what we wanted you to do. Thank you for doing that each and every time. I guess the reason I didn't want the Leafs to come back and win 5-4 is it's a regular season win and 
October and a playoff loss in April. Steve, you don't know that. Bless your heart. Genuinely. One more little narrative and we'll move on to the game. J.D. Bunkus, fourth season in a row where the Leafs have employed Hutchinson. League isn't full of incredible third goalies, but the lack of creativity and organizational development at the position is a failing. And I'm not going to sit here and pretend like, oh man, I called it. No. Michael Hutchinson was good outside of like one game last year. He was good. He even had a shutout against the Oilers. Remember that? But for as solid as he can look some nights, he looks like a non-option on others and he was in this one. Like that that's not an NHL performance. It's just not. And here's the thing, it's not his fault. It's not his fault. Fourth year he's been with the team. Dude, the, the whole crew has had four years to come up with a better option than him. And he was an emergency option, by the way, because the backup goaltending situation was so bad that they traded a draft pick to get Michael Hutchinson. Teams aren't even taking him off waivers right now. The Leafs traded a pick to get him. The best goaltender to have as your third goaltender is a prospect you can call up from the minors. And the Leafs just don't have that right now. Colgren could be that. Joseph Wool, Ian Scott, those guys, we had really high hopes for them. They've had broken development and injuries and all these terrible things. They've drafted a bunch of goalies over the last few years, and they could end up being pretty good. Archer Aktyamov over in Russia is a guy who I got my eyes on. But they don't have a guy now. They don't have anyone who's ready now. And they prepared as well as they could last year. They're like, we're going to get Aaron Dell. That's going to be a hell of a third goalie. And he gets claimed off waivers because the ideal third goalie is a prospect you can call up. So let's talk about the game. Let's go to the second period because, well, the offense couldn't do anything in the first. Actually, no. One point on the first. Again, and this goes to my point of they didn't make Shostyorkin's job hard enough in the Rangers game and the Leafs starting poorly. At the beginning of this game, I go, they, they're, they're starting well. They have the puck most of the time. They have lots of sustained offensive zone time. And this is like five, six, seven, eight minutes into the game. And I look up at the shot clock. The shots are one nothing for the Sharks! So we have a coach who says the opposing goalies have too clean of a look at the puck. And we have results that say they're missing the net or getting blocked all the time. You know what's not great? Those are two different things and they both suck. Anyway, let's fast forward to the first, second period? The second period. It's just a spa day in front of the net for Logan Couture. Oh, put your feet up, why don't you, big fella? He pots it, and it's one nothing. But you know what? Jason Spezza in the fourth line, like, Spezza, the way he hangs his head, and he was disappointed in himself, because I didn't want to say it, because I love Jason Spezza, but I was like, Jason, you were good enough on that one. And he's like, I know I wasn't good enough on that one, Steven. So he goes out there with the fourth line, I don't even think they got off the ice, and he scores himself makes up for it and it's 1-1 that is what I like to it is 2-1 already I'm not kidding this actually happened I was watching the game with my wife and by that I mean she was in the room she had no interest in the game but she goes who's in net for the Leafs tonight and I go Hutch and she goes oh is he good and I go you know what he's actually good this year and the puck was in the net in the notes that I took I didn't even write who scored it because it doesn't matter because that can't go in but then the Leafs Tie it and take the lead, in my opinion anyway, because this goal should have counted for two. After a bit of a trying shift for the Toronto Maple Leafs, Andre Kasha springs for a breakaway. Let's see what this guy does. He seems to bobble the puck a little bit, throws a nasty move on Aiden Hill, buries it, falls into the corner because Andre Kasha's got a little bit of that Mikhail Grabowski, Nikita Soshnikov in him. He's a wild man and he plows over Wes McCauley. Now wait, wait, let's see Wes's reaction. He got up and he's totally fine. It's hilarious. If he was hurt, no, no, that wouldn't be funny, but he got up and it was hilarious. So look at that. The Leafs aren't even playing that well. They're not even getting great goaltending, but the game is tied. They get a goal from a guy on a league minimum contract who's on the fourth line. They get a goal from the new guy, the new guy, Andre Kasha on the third line. His first goal is a Toronto Maple Leaf. Now it's time for the big guys to step up and make a big play directly onto Eric Carlson's stick. I don't even know if it was directly to Eric Carlson, but he's the one who ended up with it and he blasts it on. Might have hit Sandine, but I might have hit the roof when I saw Matthews do that spinny whatever on earth that clearing attempt was. And the Leafs head into intermission feeling bad because they kind of should. And dude, the, the top line's been disrupted and Marner hasn't had his regular center. And speaking of regular center, Matthews is in his first game here. And, uh, <clears throat> ah, ah. What, what do you want? What do you want? You make world beater money. You make almost nobody else makes this amount of money money. You gotta perform every night. 
every night. I'm talking barely any off games, and I'm talking your good games. The, the you're not just you're you're out shooting them. You're out possessing them. You might outscore them one to nothing. No, you gotta cave the other team's face in every time you hit the ice. And to make matters worse, the guy who the Leafs signed to be big net front guy is in the box, and when he's not, he's not in front of the net. Can't exactly call him big, but Michael Bunting is net front guy, and it's gotta be a team thing. You cannot have a token net front guy. It's you're just not going to go anywhere with that. You might go somewhere in the regular season, but who cares? Genuinely, who cares? Now, we're not going to go straight to the third period to talk about that because this game was actually lost in the second. Really, Steve? When? When they put Pierre Engvall with Matthews and Marner on purpose! I mean, Sheldon Keefe just had the line blender out. This was a couple more things people noticed. He's going with the stacked line of Nylander, Matthews, Marner. You ever notice that the stacked line, whatever version of it, never seems to work? And then the second line was Bunting, Tavares, Spezza. The Toronto Maple Leafs really should should, the moment Jason Spezza retires, offer him a, a blank contract. Have a, dr uh, have a lawyer draw up a contract with a bunch of blanks. And okay, Jason, you fill out uh, your job title. We haven't thought of it. We figured you could. You could do everything yourself. Like just, you know, like when you were a player. And you could also put your salary. GM, you want to be GM? You can be GM. You want a clause in your contract that if the Leafs ever play the Sens in the playoffs, you get to make a comeback? Okay, we can make that happen. You ever shudder to think where this team would be if Jason Spezza, when he was put on waivers last year, didn't just tell everyone, hey, don't? That's what happened, by the way. Why didn't Adam Brooks try that? All right, you're on waivers. Hey, don't. Don't. Are you serious? Don't. So serious, I'll retire. You'll retire? I'll retire. Third period starts awful right away. Just a, just a calamity in front of the net. And the Leafs defense, which was a strength last year, none of the three pairings look good. Arguably, honestly, the third pairing looks the best. Riley Brody is barely treading water. Muzzin Hall doesn't look right at all. Timothy Lilligren practically made of popcorn at this point. But oof Maron, you'd like a save there. The team looks futile, futile, futile. Who comes to the rescue? William Nylander. Of course he blasts it on. They give the goal to Tavares. Come on, we all know who scored. Ah, there's no I in team, but there is in Nylander. Wait, no, William. There's one in William. Listen, you want night of videos, you're gonna get night of spelling. But then Spezza takes a high sticking penalty and I didn't love it because it seemed like he was sort of tripped up, but errant stick, whatever. Leafs kill it off. At very least, you can say the penalty kill looks good. And then, with about a minute to go, the Leafs charging in. Tavares, excellent drop pass, Austin Matthews. Matthews with an excellent opportunity. Well play shot, blast it on! And Aiden Hill stops it because you cannot cram for the exam that is the National Hockey League. Couture empty netter, and there you go. Questions. Over under on Kapanen points tomorrow. Yeah, like, I'm not endorsing the dude who threw, you know it's a dude, the dude who threw the jersey onto the ice tonight. I'm not. But this is where the fan base's head is at. Because a couple days ago, we found out the Penguins are going to essentially have nobody, nobody on the roster when the Leafs play them Saturday. And all of us know that's a loss, right? Like, it's an automatic loss. And even if it's not, if the Leafs end up winning, we're all thinking it's a loss. Why? Is it because we're generally pessimistic? No! It's because whenever the Leafs play the Penguins, when the Penguins are shorthanded, they win! Remember that game? Remember that amazing game in 2017 that the Leafs, the Leafs beat the Penguins? Connor Brown, the little leprechaun, finds his pot of gold! Remember that game? That exciting game that the Leafs won by the skin of their teeth to get into the playoffs and McElhaney makes that unbelievable save on Crosby. Malkin wasn't even playing! They were missing so many guys that night and they almost blew it! So over under on Kapanen points tomorrow? Oh my god, uh, he's probably gonna get all four goals as the Penguins go up 4-1 and then the Leafs will make a comeback, Kapanen will throw his stick and then we'll figure it out from there. Or maybe he won't because he's not in the Leafs anymore and these things seem to only happen to them. Bunting, line one, when? Okay, so now, Michael Bunting is on line one now. You wanna know why? Line one is whatever line William Nylander is on. So everyone's like, oh, put Willie with Matthews. Put Matthews with Willie. That is line one. You want to do Matthews with Nylander and Bunting? Fine. That's line one. Then you can have Tavares, Marner, and I don't know, try Richie, maybe. Okay, I... 
Kerfoot. Everyone's like, oh, Richie, oh, what a mistake, and oh, he's overpaid, and this and that. Kerfoot makes three and a half million dollars! Even if he plays well on the third line, he's still on the wing! No! No! Not on this team! No! They can't afford- No! Put him up in the top six? All right, I'm listening. But then can you really put Richie on that third line and oh boy, should we have made this signing. Are you in? Shut up, Justin. Hutch was having a no bones day. All right, um, I had to Google this and I, th yeah, I think you're right. Steve, you're so old. Yeah, I know, this is the 15th season I've been making these videos and not one of them in the second round. So, <clears throat> couple things before we go. Hey, uh, Come watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. We're gonna be watching that Penguins game, Leafs-Penguins game, whatever the heck happens there on the Sportsnet YouTube channel. Tune in with me, Steve Dangle. I'll be there and it'll be a great time. Sportsnet YouTube channel, watch a Leafs game with Steve Dangle. That's what it's called. It's the video with my face. Also, folks, I don't like doing this, but I'm begging you. I'm actually begging you. I'm trying to get as many donations as possible for Easter Seals. I know I do this every year. It's like Christmas. It only comes once a year. I'm asking you to support my fundraising cause for the Eric Lindros Celebrity Hockey Classic in support of Easter Seals. My team is Rachel's Raiders. I'm going to play hockey so badly, so badly. I'm going to be really bad. Do you think I play because I'm really good at it? No, I'm playing because I want to raise money for kids with physical disabilities. So link down below in the description. Let's do this, please. I'm almost at two grand. We can get way higher than that. Please help. So for now, that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, sdpn.ca, to go to the SDPN Discord. And I, I can't wait to see what Mark Donk and Buzz Flibbit do tomorrow for the Penguins.